You know that bananas provide energy quickly or slowly depending on how ripe they are? Yep, that's right. A green banana has a GI index of 42, a medium banana 50, and an overripe banana 57. What is a GI index, you ask? Stick around, let's find out. Today's video is all about the glycemic index. It is the secret to health, weight management, and athletic performance. So you'll learn about the glycemic index, high and low GI foods, glycemic load, and the influence of GI on health, weight management, and performance. Let's kick things off. The glycemic index in a nutshell. It is a scoring system that rates how quickly carbohydrates raise blood sugar level. Now carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. Glucose are the building blocks of carbohydrates. So whenever we eat carbohydrates in things like breads, pasta, rice and fruit, it needs to be broken down by our stomach and our intestinal system to be able to extract the useful parts of it, such as the nutrients, the glucose for energy. So the GI index, the glycemic index, is a score from zero to 100. Now zero to 55 is considered low GI, 55 to 70 medium GI, and 70 to 100 is high GI. But what does that mean? An example would be wholemeal bread, we have a low GI. A medium GI food might be banana, again, depending on how ripe it is. And a high GI would be anything with sugar, such as a lollipop. Now when we eat food, the carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. This is what's used in our bodies to create energy. Now, if we have low blood glucose, we need to either get that from food, or we can actually store it. And there's a substance called glucagon, which triggers the liver to release glucagon as glucose. So this helps if we haven't been eating for a while, and we can maintain a good, healthy blood glucose level. On the contrary, if we have a high blood glucose level, for example, we've just had a heap of sugar, there's a substance called insulin, which is released. And that is the opposite of glucagon. That helps our bodies, specifically our liver, take some of that glucose out of the bloodstream and store it for later. This is really important to maintaining blood glucose levels throughout the day. What might that look like? So this might be a normal day for you. In the red, we have the blood glucose levels. And in the blue, like we talked about before, we have insulin levels. So when we eat something, for example at breakfast, we have carbohydrates in most meals. When we eat something, our blood glucose levels rise because we've just put some carbohydrates into our body. And like we said, insulin says, okay, that's too high. We want to maintain a fairly steady blood glucose level. So we're going to release some insulin to monitor that. Then that stabilizes it and it's time for lunch. The same process happens. We eat our food, blood glucose levels rise, insulin kicks in and helps manage that. Again, that is repeated for dinner. And then as we sleep and process all the day's food, that tapers off overnight. So now we're going to move on to glycemic load. This is a ratio of the GI index compared to the amount of carbohydrates. So the equation for this is the GI load is the GI index multiplied by the amount of carbs in grams divided by 100. So let's look at this apple for example. An apple has a GI index of about 40, and let's say we're gonna use 15 grams, or there's 15 grams of carbohydrates within the apple. So if we plug those numbers into the equation, it looks like this. The glycemic load is 40, 40 GI, times 15, 15 grams, divided by 100, equals six. So the glycemic load of an apple is six. Let's look at some more examples. So here is a whole bunch of food down the bottom here ranging from Coke, to orange juice, to rice, to bread, to a Snickers bar. So as we can see, each of these different foods has different bars here. So we're only gonna focus on the dark one, which is the glycemic load, and the medium gray one, which is the glycemic index. So let's have a look at white bread, for example. We can see the glycemic index is a 100. So that's the highest GI food you can get. We eat white bread and it raises our blood glucose levels really, really, really quickly. If we look at the dark glycemic load, it is only at 11. So compared to these other foods, that is quite a small number. Now if we look at something like a Snickers bar, which would be considered unhealthy, it has a glycemic index of about 60. So we eat it, 
sugar is released into our blood or the glucose is released into our blood at a slower level and its glycemic load is 15. This is a useful concept to keep in mind when eating different foods. Now this is fascinating. Different forms of food influence the GI index. So some foods can be high or low depending on the form of the food. A perfect example is eating natural oranges versus orange juice. Now, an orange would have a lower GI than orange juice. Why? Essentially because it has fiber. Now, fiber works to slow the rise of glucose in our blood. So it's really useful to maintaining a good blood glucose level. And the key message here is to eat food in its natural form, as this is much healthier. Why is this healthier? Let's have a look and see why GI index is the secret to health. So, increasing blood glucose levels quickly and continually through the day is very unhealthy. In fact, it can lead to diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. How do we stop this? We wanna eat low or medium index foods as this will give us a more continual blood glucose level, which means more steady levels of energy. Another thing we can do is eat fiber. As we mentioned before, this slows down the rise of blood glucose levels. The GI index is also the secret to athletic performance. It's really important to understand this. So eating low GI foods before a sport, for example, will give us a long lasting continual energy. And if we use things like high GI foods, which would usually be considered unhealthy, strategically, we can use that to provide a quick energy spike. This would be perfect for just before a game or even at half time. And GI is the secret to body composition. High GI foods raise blood glucose levels really quickly. Now, if your body doesn't use this energy, then it is stored as fat. Conversely, if we want to increase our muscle mass, we can use different GI foods depending on our goals and whether we're combining that with exercise or not. So it's really important to understand this and it can really help our, our body composition. All right guys, well done, you made it. Here is a quick summary of everything you've learned in this video. The GI index rates how quickly carbohydrates are broken down into glucose and it goes from zero to 100. We want to eat more low GI foods, so anything from zero to about 55. This helps our health, athletic performance. We want to eat wholemeal pasta, bread and rice, rather than white pasta, white rice and white bread. High GI foods are things like lollies, white bread and things that are heavily processed. These are unhealthy for us. And glycemic loading is GI index multiplied by the amount of carbs in grams divided by 100. Thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about today's topic or anything else you want to learn, please comment below. Thanks. Bye.